From two risks of severe weather this week to a whole lot of cold rain for many of us to winter not being done yet. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice keeping you up to date on all things storms and boy do we have an active February with us. Lots of rain with severe weather possible on Wednesday and then again from this system right here. This low right here on Saturday could produce tornadoes in the south and then it turns very cold next week which presents an interesting pattern. Winter may not be done. In fact, the GFS showing a couple of different runs here of winter definitely not being done for the south, depending on the track of a couple of different low pressure systems. Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoy what's going on right now because we've got a lot of changes to come our way, including big ups and downs temperature wise and the chance for not only just thunder, but the possibility of severe weather in some locations. If you're new to the channel, please let me know where you're watching from. That really helps me out. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I'd really appreciate that and that helps you stay informed with what's going on. Let's go back to the severe weather threat. I want to show you this. It's done so well, so, so great here lately uh, with the possibilities of severe weather. This is an experimental forecast from the Colorado State University folks and what it does is it looks at a whole lot of different parameters here to give us a forecast of severe weather. And as we go through Tuesday into Wednesday, we have a growing threat threat for tornadoes in parts of Louisiana and Texas. That's where some hail begins to form as well. You see Tuesday that threat is toward Texas and Louisiana. This is a low pressure system forming that's going to move toward the north and east. Low pressures this time of the year, really any time of the year, are uh, not a good thing. You do not want to see that. Wednesday there is already a severe weather threat. I'll show you this. I'll also show you the Storm Prediction Center's threat in just a minute. But boy, there's a tornado risk here across uh, south and central uh, Mississippi and Alabama. And then you get up into the Atlanta metro area. There is a risk for some of those storms that, to hold together and get up the I-85 corridor. And how far up the I-85 corridor is key to uh, that wedge of cold air that's locked in across so many today. We didn't get out of the 30s in most locations. It has been a raw, raw day. Moving forward, though, we get a second round of severe weather. Thursday, this is pushing off the coast. Friday's a rebuilding day as the low pressure, the second low pressure, starts to get going. And look at Saturday. We have got to pay attention to Saturday. All eyes are on that as it unfortunately looks like there could be a severe weather outbreak. Uh, same areas, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, but probably for a larger area and probably a higher threat of that. You see two things here. You see the uh, black circled area that would indicate that the possibility is there for strong tornadoes to form or strong severe weather. And the probability is the shade there. That would be a high probability there in the pinkish red. That would be for Saturday. This adds up with what the Storm Prediction Center is trying to show us right here. Uh, as we look closer at that, uh, there is already a medium risk of severe weather as we go throughout the day tomorrow for these areas of Georgia, basically Atlanta, south and westbound. Uh, that is for all severe weather modes. If you specifically look at the tornado threat, there is a large area of a 5% chance. There is a lot of rotation, a lot of wind energy in the atmosphere here. So tornadoes could very well break out from New Orleans to southern Southern Mississippi to Southern Alabama, basically Birmingham South and Atlanta South and West. Now, that's not the only threat. Let's shift things over to our Saturday time frame. Almost an identical area. This would be Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, except for it goes a little bit farther to the north. This would be over parts of Tennessee. And again, if you go back to the Colorado State University area, it really lines up with what the models are showing. So really well drawn here by the storm prediction folks. And just like last week, folks, I keep reiterating this time after time, but we had severe weather last week from a system that uh, produced isolated severe weather. We had several confirmed tornadoes in Tennessee, and unfortunately one was an EF2, ended up taking the lives of two people. Uh, so we need to stay dialed in on this pattern, and you know we are. Let's look at what the models are showing. This is the GFS going crazy on the possibility of snow going into the middle of next week. We're 10 days out. We need to look out for it, but is it possible? Absolutely, and let me tell you why. All right, so a cold rain with ice. There are ice storm warnings in Boone and uh, Watauga County, Avery County, uh, and, and that's going to be the case as we go into tomorrow is ice is going to be possible in some locations. Um, 
We need to look out for that for areas north and east of Asheville. There's rain elsewhere. A cold rain looks to be very likely as we go through tomorrow. Now it's going to be another day where we're in the 30s. But here comes this low pressure system about mid afternoon over Louisiana, that twisting and turning of the winds, bringing up warm air from the south right here that collides with that cold air and we get severe weather to break out mainly toward Mississippi and Alabama tomorrow. But do some of those cells hold together and get up against that boundary of warmer and colder air? Let's look at that. Where could that possibly be? And as I analyze the atmosphere temperature wise, there's plenty of cold air here to keep things stable. But here across southern and central Alabama and Mississippi and do uh, basically middle Georgia, there's that boundary of 80s on this side, 40s on this side. And that could very well present the risk for severe weather. So let's move it forward here. Let's get past our Wednesday, Thursday threat. Yes, there's going to be an additional several inches of rain. I mean, we're talking about quite a soaking here three to six inches of rain, a good bet here across the Western Carolinas and Georgia. This is, by the way, a big snow for New England and the Northeast. This pushes out. We get a bit of a breather for Valentine's Day. High pressure digging in here, settling up for another round. Another low pressure system early on Saturday. You see it forming here toward Texas and then Louisiana. This is going to stir up more dis more more problems. All right, what we're getting to happen here is another low pressure system forms and moves toward the northeast. As it does, it collides with that cold air and storms are possible Saturday afternoon into the evening hours. Where is yet to be determined, but you've got a stout low pressure system here. A lot of wind energy mixing up the wind direction and the wind speeds. And you've got warm, unstable air moving out ahead of that. And you've got cold air right there. Let's go back to our temperature profile and look at that. You've got a cold pool of air right here locked in against the Appalachian Mountains. That would include all the upstate of South Carolina into North Georgia. But notice that wedge separates very warm air. So here we are Saturday late evening. Most of us are stable in the Western Carolinas, Charlotte, but it's 65 to 70 degrees in Atlanta. The problem here is those boundaries oftentimes when you get a low pressure that sits somewhere over here, the storms and the rotation like to find a boundary. And a lot of times that boundary of cool northeast winds coming in like this and southerly winds coming in like this can create some rotation right there on that temperature differential. So that's something we're going to have to watch closely on Saturday uh, for a lot of folks. This rolls through slowly, so you're likely waking up and getting out the door to church to quite the soaking on Sunday morning. And then this pushes off toward the east. That allows for colder air to be in place, but actually right where we should be for this time of the year. Going into Sunday night, Monday, we're back to the 20s for lows, and we're seeing highs in the 40s going into next week. Now that may be all that we see, but we are in a very active pattern right now where there's lots of waves setting up. So does another wave, another low pressure system form sometime between the 18th and the 21st? We need to look out for that. That's a time frame I've been highlighting for a couple of weeks now as being a vulnerable time frame for this flip and for us to see a short stint of winter try to return. That said, here we go, Tuesday the 18th. We are darn cold across a good bit of the United States, back to where we should be. And look at this bad boy diving in here. Cold air is in place, and here comes a deep low pressure system. Where does it go is the question. How far north is the track? Do we get snow on the north side? Do we get a little bit of a mix somewhere in the middle, or is it all rain for a lot of places in the south that want to see snow? Simply put, Tuesday, February 18th through Thursday, February 20th, is a time frame to watch. This GFS shows something trying to develop and then another low off the coast feeding back some moisture with maybe another low right here and breaking out some snow and ice across the Carolinas and Georgia. Certainly a possibility. Is it written in stone? By no means. Let's flip on over to the European model. Show you that same run that the American model said. Uh, get all are agreeing on storm and severe risks Wednesday and Thursday and then Saturday uh, with a lot of rain to boot. But next week, we're all cooling down. We all agree on that. European has a low too, which is very interesting. So both models have a low. Both models have a low track into the east. Where does it go? European wants to kind of fall apart on Wednesday, but they're identical in placements of the low and the fact that there's a low there. Then it creates a little wimpy low off the Carolina coast. 
not strong enough to send back enough moisture into that cold air. So it just kind of fizzles out, moves out to sea. Maybe a quick burst of snow for central North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Winston-Salem. Could see a little blast of some snow there. That would be next Wednesday night, Thursday. Again, very interesting that both the models have a low pressure. Both the models have something to watch. Okay, then the Europeans like, nah, nothing else for the rest of the time other than it being quite cool for a couple of days here toward the end of the month. How about our Canadian model? We do have access to a Canadian model, and let's just rewind it. I spy another low. They all have a low mid next week. Phenomenal, phenomenal model agreement here. Same time frame too, Wednesday. Where does it go? Where does it track? That's the key. This Canadian model somewhere in the middle. Some snow for Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Virginia. For Western North Carolina, this low brings some snow into you. Lots of snow for Western North Carolina on this solution. Then it sends it back up the coast for a nor'easter where a lot of place up the I-95 corridor gets some snow. Then it pushes out. So something to watch. Something I've got my eyes peeled on. Uh, but severe weather. We need to look at that. Two instances, one would be tomorrow. Look at that instability building through Alabama, Mississippi, into Georgia. This is fuel for storms, and we've got to stay peeled on that. We've got to look at that closely. Does, how far north does that get? And then settles back down. A second almost identical storm forms Saturday. Look how more plentiful that storm energy is. Look how it moves off toward the east and unfortunately creates more severe weather for Mississippi, Alabama. That's going to be the heart of it. But there's some storm action here, some thunder certainly possible Saturday into Sunday for areas across the south. Then it sweeps through and we're done with severe weather for a while. Then honestly, we turn our attention to will it snow in some places? Well, if you look at all the 51 different runs of the European model, it's saying there's a chance. It's got a 30% chance to a 40% chance across western North Carolina. It's got a 10 to now 20% chance creeping into the northern part of the upstate. So something to watch for the ID5 corridor mid next week. Do we get some action? GFS model, same run. I mean, it's a little bullish here. 10, 20% chance being this far out, something to watch. I wanna leave you with this, outlook. If we're gonna get another opportunity for snow,